What's the most important question you ask when travelling abroad? Accommodation is often a consideration, but food is by far the most important thing we want to know about. Where do you go and what do you eat? Delish destinations. Everything you need to know and look forward to for your next overseas holiday. Hello and welcome to Delish Destinations. I'm Trevor Cochran. We've got another sensational program for you. Each week, I get to take you somewhere in the world and showcase the best of the local cuisine. This week, we've headed to the South Island of New Zealand, to Dunedin. We've got some amazing food stories for you. So sit back and be inspired. Many of us feel like the craft beer revolution is a relatively new phenomena, but the truth of the matter is it all started here in Dunedin back in the early 1990s. And my destination is the place where it all began with the godfather of craft brewing. This is Emerson's Brewery, home to nothing short of a beer empire. Just a short 20 minute walk from the centre of town, this is the home to some incredible award winning beers. Head brewer Richard Emerson is the mastermind behind the company's success and has been the inspirational innovator in the craft beer scene in New Zealand, inspiring so many to expand their beer horizons. So Richard, what inspired you to create this amazing craft brewery? I love good beer, beer not cooking, except rather than the cook. You can make a beer, you can have a beer at the end of the day. It's the fruit of your labour, and it's wonderful. And you've taken it to a new level, haven't you, with matching good beers with good foods? Nothing like a good time to enjoy good things in life. We have a wonderful place where you can not only just come and have the beer, but have a good food. And learn about making beer, right? Learn yes. about the process oh, yeah. too. Yeah, we've got brewery tours that can go around. Learn a bit about the brewing process. What was the very first beer you started with? The London Porter. London yeah, Porter? I know it's done crazy, but I couldn't afford much equipment in the early days. Mm -hmm. And by having a dark beer, it was easier to do. Clarity was not an issue, but the flavour was more important. The first brew, the London Porter, is still served today and incredibly popular with locals. One of the things you'll find when you come to Dunedin is the typical experience that you'll have when it comes to the locals. They're warm, friendly, endearing and welcoming. And Richard really epitomises this culture that you'll find here in NZ. You see, this guy is wonderful and he's got an amazing sense of humour. For instance, when they opened this building, he got his mum to open it. And he insisted on a Dunedin tradition, and that was that the bagpipes were played despite the fact that he's profoundly deaf. And a lot of the people who came along thought, well, that's a really interesting choice of things to do. But after the bagpiper had finished, they all knew that it was his wicked sense of humour. Because as they said later, he didn't have to put up with a bloody racket. With a company purchased by Lion in 2012, it allowed Richard's passion for craft beers to reach a new audience of people. By May 2017, monthly sales had surpassed 200,000 litres and Emerson's shows no sign of slowing down. Now the thing that makes this place super special for anybody that visits is the food and the menu is amazing, has been designed around the very many beers that are actually created on site. It's all about mixing and matching to make sure that you enjoy the food and the beer. It is absolutely brilliant. And that's what makes this destination right here in Dunedin a delish destination. In the Dunedin suburb of Mouldy Hill, you'll find an eatery with a real authentic point of difference. This is number seven, Belmac, a much lauded restaurant offering a relaxed vibe paired with some sophisticated bistro cuisine. Restaurateur Katrina Tuvi is in her 11th year of business, but it hasn't always been an easy road. Now, Katrina, this is a amazing restaurant. Oh, thank and I, you. I know it's called Belmac number seven, but it really should be called The Phoenix, shouldn't it? Because it's <laughs> risen from the ashes. Yeah, well, we have because we, um, we had a fire 
last August yeah. and we were closed for almost 10 months. Let's talk about the food because that's a big deal. That's what people absolutely love about the place. If we were going to talk about your philosophy with food, it's it's not pretentious in any way, is it? It's it's, it's very not. wholesome. Yeah, it is wholesome. It's um, it's real food. We have a sustainability focus, and we've had that since we opened. We're about community, and we're about sustainable relationships as well. So we're not just talking about the food cycle. We're talking about how we treat people, how we approach business. That's been our philosophy from the beginning. Our head chef Penny Allen, her philosophy is using classic technique with bare basic methods. So she just simplifies it and she uses all of something. We do a, a pretty good scotch fillet mm -hmm. cooked on the wood grill with a really delicious onion sauce and a jus, so really simple. And with a wood grill, you know, you're burning, you're actually burning wood, but you've picked a particular type as well. Yeah, so we use apple wood and we, um, we use it for a couple of reasons. Um, it's hot burning, so it gives us the heat we need on our fire. It has a great flavour. Let's talk about sustainability a little bit further. There's very few restaurants that have their own herb garden vegetables growing at the back. No, we're, this is one of the reasons why we're here. Um, when I was looking for a site, I wanted one that could have a backyard garden. and. As we've been here, we've grown the garden. So first of all, we had you know 50 square metres, now we have 1,000 square metres. It's grown as wow. we've developed. Wow. And um, we even have bees down there now. It's just a, another nice circle for us um, of educating people, of providing a great product for our customers um, and looking after what we have here. The restaurant has a zero waste ethos. This is the future of restaurants worldwide. So this holistic understanding of the impacts the restaurant has is refreshing. Mediterranean. Wonderful. Enjoy. That's great. Now look, I've got to make a recommendation for you. If you come here anytime before three, make sure you try out their other signature dish, the Mediterranean breakfast. It has everything that you've ever imagined a Mediterranean breakfast would have, plus some lovely local ingredients. I just love the pickled vegetables fresh out of the garden. And this is a real reflection of head chef Penny Allen's influence over the menu. Her background, which is Greek and Lebanese, really is interwoven inextricably through all of the items you'll find on the menu. And it just delivers this wonderful Mediterranean feel to many of the dishes. Who would have thought that you'd find the Med right here in Dunedin? The food here is absolutely delicious. The staff knowledgeable, dedicated and friendly. It's that 100% pure New Zealand welcome you expect. Put this one on your food itinerary. You're gonna love it. Dunedin is a beautiful city. In fact, it's often known as the Edinburgh of the South. In the heart of the CBD, you'll find the Octagon area, and right in the middle of that, the Regent Theatre. It's a historic theatre, but it's the building next door that I'm going to check out today. You see, Vault 21 is really making waves on the South Island. This is a popular Asian fusion restaurant combining international street flavours with fresh local produce to create a mixture of shared plates and meals, complemented by a unique blend of roasted coffee, craft beers and delicious wines. Now you may think that Vault 21 has some pretty interesting decor and it does. Some of it's eclectic and some of it is historic. This beautiful old building that the restaurant's housed in was once a bank and they've managed to retain some of those original features including the vault just back there and this incredible pressed tin wall panelling which has been turned into a wonderful feature. The menu here has been carefully crafted by the executive head chef Greg Piner who's worked in top hotels and restaurants around New Zealand, including the internationally award-winning Blanket Bay in Queenstown. Greg, pretty impressive restaurant, mate. The fit-out's amazing, but the history of the building's equally impressive, right? Oh, it's a pretty impressive fit-out, yeah. So my boss, Andre, had this vision of this, and this is what he's come up with. Like, sensational. You've really hit the mark right across the South Island by doing so much work with local produce. It's really important in the, the menus that you've crafted. 
for me, there's nothing like um, going to like a local farm and actually seeing your produce being grown, mm -hmm. or going out on a local fishing boat and seeing your fish get caught or crayfish, like the Kuratani crayfish. Oh my god! Yeah. Like, that just that just fizzes me up. One of the things that you guys have really made a bit of a name for yourselves on, yeah, is insects. Insects, yes, locusts. Right. right? So, real funny story. Um, <laughs> out surfing with my, one of my friends, Malcolm, one day, and we're getting out of the water, and he goes, oh, how would you feel about serving locusts in your restaurant? And I honestly thought, oh, my God, he's drunk. He shouldn't be <laughs> surfing. So then I actually thought about it, and I'm like, we should actually give this a nudge. And um, so we gave it a nudge, and it actually blew up. Like, we had media, TV, like, everything in here. It just made headlines, and we ended up doing insect dinners, and, it, like, when you think about it, it probably is the future. Yeah. But like people just have to get their heads around these insects. What's the dish that you would say at the moment um, that you'd really hang your hat on here is, is probably your signature? Um, I do a lot of stuff with um, silver fern farms and um, obviously meat. So I think at the moment my signature dish would be my venison dish. Okay. I've won multiple awards for that sort of stuff. So, and it's really simple, but it's really tasty. The 140 seat restaurant offers indoor, outdoor and private dining options as well as heated seats to help customers cope with Dunedin's winter temperatures. Now, this is the moment of truth. This amazing venison, I just can't wait to try it. And uh, that fusion is represented in the sauce that's come through here, a little bit of greens on top. Mm. That is superb. That is absolutely delicious. There's some ponzu or some kind of citrusy sauce coming through that. That is superb. And whenever I have great venison, always have it with a, with a bug. This is the moment of truth. Shall we try it? Let's see how we go. Hmm. Nasty. Not bad, actually. Really good. I'll just wash it down with some Otago Red. Mmm. If you follow any of the shows that we produce, you will know that I am mad keen on my gardens. In fact, when I knew that we had this story, I was really excited. Glenfellick Gardens is famous. It's considered to be one of New Zealand's most important gardens, listed as a garden of significance in this region by the New Zealand Garden Trust. Now, what makes it so special is probably its location. It's between basically two valleys. It comes together in a microclimate that allows them to grow so many rare, unusual and incredibly beautiful plants. Match that with views out over the harbour that are unsurpassed and you cannot beat this as a destination. That's not why we're here today, however. Located inside the beautiful historic gardens is the Glenfellick Restaurant, where the award-winning chef, Hannes Barreiter, created superb cuisine with local seasonal produce. How did you find your way here? This is an amazing part of the world. Yeah, it's, it's nice being out here, and it's nice for a team, for the chef team, for the kitchen team as well. Your philosophy is very much about freshness, isn't it? Uh, yes, that's our key, key thing, freshness, sustainability, and giving our diners a little bit of an experience. Not too much, we don't go too crazy, but like we, we are quite, say, sophisticated, but we add a little tweak to every dish. While you can just relax with a cup of coffee and take in the views over what has to be one of the Southern Hemisphere's premier gardens, Glenfellick Restaurant is known for its Trust the Chef menu, which is a pretty big stretch for many of us, and that got me wondering about how this really works. It means we just cook something and you have no choice, <laughs> um, technically. So yeah. what, what, you can obviously tell us if you're a vegetarian, vegan, any allergies, and we cater to all that. What we do is we produce everything on the day for the evening and then it's gone. So we have zero wastage and, and our guests always get the freshest product. With a challenge set out for lunch, Hannes has delivered what could be described as an example of his signature dish. Let's face it, it is hard when the ingredients are changing based on today's catch. Take a look at that fish, it is superb. The blue cod is perfectly cooked. It is a generous portion sitting on a bed of Asian-inspired slaw underneath. There's some veggies, wonderful, wonderful 
fresh in season asparagus and I'm sorry, I just can't help myself. I've got to try this, but don't worry. I'm going to tell you what it's like. It just looks incredible. Mmm. Superb. Superb. This is a destination for the mind, the heart and the stomach. It is an absolutely beautiful part of the Otago Peninsula you will just fall in love with. If you're wondering what the best time of the year to come here to enjoy the gardens is, I'm going to tell you springtime because the rhododendrons are just amazing. But to be quite honest, this is the garden that just keeps on giving. It's going to look good all year round. And then, of course, there's the food. Now, fresh, local, in the case of the fish caught this morning, it doesn't get any better. Now, the Māori people of New Zealand have a word. It's called manatanga, and it's all about people coming together through kindness and hospitality. And nowhere is it more applicable than this place. I know it might sound a little counterintuitive to what this show is all about, because we do travel the world finding some of the finest food experiences. But when the crew have some downtime, there's nothing better than having a nice burger. In fact, we reckon we know them pretty well. But here in Dunedin, there is a burger joint that is really rocking it. In fact, it's considered to be one of the best in all of New Zealand. So I thought I'd take you in, show you around. We're in the middle of Dunedin's warehouse precinct, and this is good good. Right off the bat, this place has got a pretty special vibe. We're in what looks like an old warehouse. There's a food truck over there, and I don't think I've ever seen so much neon. Co-owners Rob and Reese have a pretty interesting story. You guys have been shaking the tree. There's so many people stood up in New Zealand in the last sort of six to 12 months and said, who are these guys? Why are their burgers so good? What is the difference? I would say that's a lot to do with a mixture of quality and also the simplicity of them. Mm -hmm. Everything's sourced locally. We've got a local butcher doing our beef blend, a local bakery doing all of our buns. Mm -hmm. Everything's delivered daily. Nothing's ever frozen. So at this point in time, I'm assuming both of you guys have got really big backgrounds in the, the food industry. Yeah, no, quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> I guess we had to start with something, and we started in, Rob and I both started in my mum's kitchen, chipping away, <laughs> trying to work out what the best do. burger tasted like, and we got to the point that we felt pretty confident with something, and uh, yeah, opened the doors. Good Good regularly ends up on the top 10 New Zealand burger lists, having been voted the third best burger in the country at the beginning of 2019. This place really is something special. But look, the ultimate test is the taste. So to help me with that, I've got 29-year-old burger expert Ben, who also happens to be our sound guy, in to help me with this. What Ben doesn't know about great burgers isn't worth knowing. Ben, show us your technique. How was it, Ben? Mm. It was good, good. Of course it was. Farmers markets are becoming more and more popular as more of us realise just where our food comes from. It's actually from the farmer, not the supermarkets that sell the food. This means that we get to talk to the people who are producing it. We get to understand what goes into the food we're eating. It's so important. So this particular farmers market is one that I'd thoroughly recommend you check out. Dunedin is home to one of the absolute best. This is the Otago Farmer's Market. It's where you'll find the freshest and the best of Otago's wonderful artisanal produce and meats, interesting buskers, and of course, it's a great place for little people watching too. Open Saturday from 8am through to 12.30, vendors come from all over the Otago area to sell their produce. Starting back in March 2003, the market was a huge leap of faith on the part of the Otago Farmers Market Trust, as well as the 57 vendors who came along that day and absolutely surpassed expectations. 
It's now of measurable economic benefit to Dunedin, Otago and the surrounding regions, regularly attracting several thousand customers. Enough of the philosophy. What about the produce? Well, it's changing all the time, just like the seasons. And I find it fascinating to browse what's on offer and talk to the people who actually supply it. Now, this uh, peanut butter business of yours has really taken off since you've come back from Perth. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I spent a few years in Perth and um, as, a, as a sort of a site supervisor, carpenter, and then, yeah, got into something a bit different when came, I got back. Came back to Dunedin and got into peanut butter. Yeah. You've got different types, plus you've actually got some butter that's not even peanuts, right? We've got our smooth and crunchy. Yeah, we roast all the peanuts in an old coffee roaster. We've got almond butter, hazelnut butter, made with local hazelnuts and awesome. a chilli flavoured peanut butter. The market's got a real strong environmental sustainability positioning because I've been watching people walk in with these jars and they literally, they're just exchanging. Exactly, yeah, so we offer a jar swap discount so we just, yeah, sterilise them and refill them all. Everybody is is actually being really environmentally conscious. Yeah, yeah, everyone's trying, we're working on it all together, so yeah, we'll, we'll get there one day. It really is the vendors and their wonderful products that make this such a fantastic event for the community to enjoy. For a lot of the customers coming here, their favourite vendors become friends. There's a trust relationship here. Getting to know the people behind the products and their stories behind what they sell is a big part of what makes this farmer's market so special. The Otago Farmer's Market is a wonderful destination on a Saturday morning here in Dunedin. There's so much incredible produce, there's a great sense of community and I've got to tell you, if you're going to come here, don't have breakfast. There's so many wonderful treats to enjoy. Well that's it for this week's show. I hope you enjoyed it. Now there are so many amazing food experiences you can have here in Dunedin. If you want to know anything more about it, check out this website because there is a great list of places to go, things to do and great experiences in what is one of the most beautiful cities on the planet. I'm Trevor Cochran. I'm looking forward to seeing you again real soon as we continue our journeys through New Zealand for delish destinations.